Do I know where I'm gonna be or even wanna be in 20 years? Absolutely not. I tell myself, like, it's actually really ungrateful to just assume that you have 20 years. Like, be stoked that you have today. The girl on the bleachers, the mad woman, and the mastermind. Those are just a few of the nicknames Taylor Swift has gone by during her career, and today she earned another one, a biggie. Time Magazine officially crowned the pop megastar person of the year. Her massively popular Eras Tour is not only on track to become the biggest global tour of all time, it also is the first ever to gross over $1 billion. And her childhood home state newspaper made sure to honor the moment with this amazing headline. Berks County woman named Times 2023 Person of the Year. Well, I'm going to bring on somebody pretty special, Brian West, the official Taylor Swift reporter. That is his job for USA Today Network. Brian, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Let's talk about today. I mean, we have had Beatlemania. We have had Elvis. But have we ever had anything like Taylor Swift? Hi, Stephanie. Thank you so much for having me on. Taylor Swift is entering her time person of the year era. And I would have to say, I don't think we have had somebody quite like Taylor. She is a complete powerful engine and a force that is only just picking up in momentum. She says in her concert, it's been a long time coming, but I think we're only just seeing the beginning. Let's talk about that, because she has built a legacy to last, right? Her relationship with her fans and the loyalty they have to her, to put it in, to, to put it in her words, why does so many fade, but she's still here? If you look at just the past year of her massive impact, you could talk about the economy. So every city that she visits, there are millions of dollars that are poured in. You see mayors of these towns that are changing the name. In Glendale, Arizona, they called it Swift City for a couple of days while she was in town. She's being taught in the educational sector. Harvard's offering a class. More than 10 universities have decided to add her to their course catalog. Then you look at her as just an artist. She's one of the only artists who's written all of her own songs or collaborated with others. There's only one cover that she's done in her massive 200 plus discography. She's re recording all of her albums. This past year, she re recorded Speak Now, Taylor's version, and also 1989, Taylor's version. And that's because she wants ownership. So that's eight of 10 albums that she can now call her own. And then you look at this tour like you said it's estimated to make more than a billion dollars she's already gone to 66 cities and next year is projected to go to 86 cities and she still hasn't officially said if next year is the end of the tour if it all ends in canada and i have been really impressed by what she did in the movie industry so she bypassed production studios went straight to a distributor struck a deal shattered the record 100 million dollars in pre-sales and then there's the NFL. It's already super popular, has a ton of viewers, and somehow Taylor adds even more eyes to the NFL. I can't even believe that movie. I went to it. You walked in. There's a commemorative cup. There's a commemorative jumbo popcorn tub. And the movie itself didn't even have any behind-the-scenes footage. It was just the show, yet people are dancing in the aisles and loving every minute of it. I want to talk about the cover story. And they can't wait to watch it on on streaming as well, right? On her 100%, birthday, she's going to release it. I've got a 10-year-old just, just waiting for it. I want to talk about this cover story because Taylor Swift is not without conflict, right? She's had huge conflicts, lots of high-profile people trying to take her down in her career, and she doesn't talk about them. In the cover story, she says she's not going to dignify it because she knows that trash takes itself out. Every time. That was one of my favorite lines that she said. This is why she's so popular among her fan base. She is unapologetically herself. To quote the 2023 Merriam Webster uh, word of the year, she's authentic. And that's what fans love. She holds up a mirror to her vulnerability, her struggles, and how she's been able to rise from the ashes over and over. And one of her songs um, that she just released on streaming, Stop, You're Losing Me, she says, uh, that she's this phoenix that's constantly rising from the ashes. And that's just a point of relation that people really appreciate. That's why they're so excited for what's allegedly her next re-recorded album, Reputation, that's supposed to be coming out next. Let's talk about you for a moment. I'm get You got this job ahead of thousands of candidates, 
allegedly even someone whose job it was to cover the White House. I want to understand, what's your background? Were you a culture reporter before? Did you cover music? Did you cover sports? Did you cover politics? Because Taylor Swift spans it all. And now that you cover her, can you no longer be a Swifty? Because you got to be objective, brother. I'm really glad you're asking this question. So I am a journalist first, and I'm a Taylor Swift fan second, but I do have the experience to back it up. I went to Northwestern University, the Medill School of Journalism. I then worked in newsrooms for more than a decade across the nation. I even interned at 30 Rock for the Today Show and NBC News. I've won awards like a DuPont, Murrow, and two Emmy Awards, and I have covered it all. There was a few years for in NBC at Phoenix that I covered breaking news, crime news, political news, everything, and including the features. And that's actually how I got to meet Taylor. So during Reputation, the first time around, I was made fun of by the anchors for being a fan of Taylor at a time that she was coming back from her cancellation. And I sent that to her team. And the team sent me back this box and said, Taylor would like to meet you. Get and so out of all town. of that combined allowed me to have this position. And what I really appreciate the most is I left news five years ago to focus on mental health and sobriety. I've been sober for five years and learned so many valuable lessons. And what I truly see is this is the amalgamation of all of my crossroads coming together, important life lessons that have allowed me to have this opportunity. Well, rock on. Uh, congratulations and what a beat to have.